in the chapter of optimization today's topic is unconstrained maxima and minima of the profit function as we have already studied that when we study the various functions and we want to optimize those functions mostly we utilize certain conditions or the constraints and even those constraints they are related to certain variables and for those variables we take their values or their parameters so in that form we say that that function is going to be optimized either maximized or the minimized reference to or the subject to certain condition so when those conditions they will be available that function will be called constrained maxima or the constrained minima and a very simple example is that when we have taken a various aspects of the utility maximization where we take the budget line of the consumer as the constraint so the consumer is going to maximize the utility constraint to the given budget but in this case we are going to take the example of the profit where we are not going to take any constraint and there can be possibility that certain aspects they can be optimized without any constraint and this is the profit maximization in this profit maximization model we will take the examples of the three aspects mean there will be one case when there will be only one independent variable and there will be again a case when there will be the two independent variable and then then we will extend to the n variable case so in this case when we are having only one variable utilized for the production so as per the first order condition that is necessary for the optimization and we have to optimize our output y with reference to this x so this will be attained through a stationary value that is change in y with respect to change in x that will be its first derivative and it must be equal to 0 so this necessary condition it requires that the first derivative or the change in the profit with respect to that variable it must be equal to 0 and this will show a uh, that tangent line against the output function and that horizontal tangent line against the output function will provide a stationary point mostly we have mentioned this point as a tangent point but it is more appropriate to mention here is as a stationary point because it will show that there is no change in that and either this point is maximum or this point is minimum this is still not clear because this will be has to be clarified through the second order condition but being stationary it is clear that at this point there is no change in the profit function and hence first derivative equal to 0 is a necessary condition but it is not the sufficient condition because for the sufficient conditions we have to take the further derivative or the next differentiation so now there is a case when we say that the output is the function of the two inputs so keeping in view the previous example of the necessary condition now we have to take the first partial derivatives in the sense and when we say the partial derivative it means first we will measure the change in the y with respect to the change in xi keeping the other input constant so in this manner if we have to measure change in y with respect to x1 we have to keep this x2 constant and if we have to measure change in y with respect to x2 for that time we have to keep the x1 constant so we have to measure or we have to assert the behavior of this function at certain point and that point it can be any point and with the notation of x dot o and if at this point we have to calculate in this way that we give this point o 
equal to t so now we will measure this whole function not by the in total rather we will evaluate this function individually by all the factors that will be utilized either for this factor and either for this so we will evaluate the function along any differentiation able curve that passes through that point x not and that x not point will be joined or we can say the equal for all the variables and those curves now that if it is explained or shown by x1 t and other one if it is explained by x2 t so we will represent all those curves that they will move like this and this will be this notation when t will be equal to o and likewise there can be any other form but the simplest thing will be that that this t varies in the value and this t varies in the values of either x1 and x2 in that form responding they also vary and hence any pair that is x1 t and x2 they both denoted uh, denoted by xt they traces out their locus from that curve which will have the similar plane of x1 x2 so in simple form agar hum isko kahe ki agar hamare do input variable ki base pe hum output ko evaluate karna chah rahe hain to hame us ke liye ek particular point of maximum dekhna hoga aur wo point of maximum point hame dekhna hoga for each evaluator individual ke liye aur usko dekhte hue agar hum kahe ki wo har ek aspect jo hai uska ek apna local maxima hona chahiye और ये लोकल मैक्सिमा अटेन करने का जो हमारे पास वायबल मेथड है वो अल्जेब्रिकली और मैथमेटिकली हमारे पास सिर्फ और सिर्फ द फर्स्ट ऑर्डर कंडीशन है सो इन दिस फॉर्म हमने फर्स्ट डेरिवेटिव जो हम लेते हैं चेंज इन वाई विद रिस्पेक्ट टू एक्स वन एंड चेंज इन वाई विद रिस्पेक्ट टू एक्स टू एंड दीज टू दे मस्ट बी इक्वल टू जीरो सो द नेसेसरी कंडीशन फॉर दीज टू इनपुट to be maximized at any particular point is that that their first partial derivative of that function it must be equal to zero at that very particular point now we can extend our this two variable case with the n variable case in the similar manner that now if the output is produced through the utilization of 1 2 3 and up to n variable we can generate a similar manner various uh, cases where we can have this x1 x2 x3 with xo and we can say that for all those solution we will have first derivative condition the necessary condition mean the first derivative with respect to the first variable and the second variable and then third variable or the change in the output with respect to the n nth variable for all that the first derivatives of all those respective variables it should be equal to 0 and they should be like this that the fi will be equal to 0 and here we have put the notation of 1 that i is equal to 1 and to this and it means if it will be this this will be f1 f2 f3 and it can be like this to the fn and it must be equal to the 0 thank you